They are four of the most common plants we know. We've always thought that we controlled them. But what if, in fact, they have been shaping us? We don't give nearly enough credit to plants. They've been working on us. They've been using us for their own purposes. Four plants that have traveled the road to success by satisfying human desires. The tulip, by gratifying our desire for a certain kind of beauty, has gotten us to take it from its origins in Central Asia and disperse it around the world. Marijuana, by gratifying our desire to change consciousness, has gotten people to risk their lives, their freedom, in order to grow more of it and plant more of it. The potato, by gratifying our desire for control, the control over nature so that we can feed ourselves, has gotten itself out of South America and expanded its range far beyond where it was 500 years ago. And the apple, by gratifying our desire for sweetness, begins in the forests of Kazakhstan and is now the universal fruit. These are great winners in the dance of domestication. A look at nature the way you've never seen it before with best-selling author Michael Pollan. And this relationship of the plants learning how to gratify our desires and our working for them in exchange for this is what I call the botany of desire. In the plant world, just like our own, not everyone can be beautiful or sweet. But even a lowly weed can get us to work for it, and quite slavishly at that, if it's clever enough to cash in on a skill that every plant is born with, its ability to make chemicals. The genius of plants is really the arts of biochemistry. Creating these really interesting, complicated, original molecules some are designed to produce flavors. Others are designed to produce great beauty. And then you've got this class of plants that is producing these molecules that incredibly have the power to alter what goes on in the human mind. This plant, by making just such a molecule, has gotten us to spread it all over the world. Scientists call it cannabis. It is better known as marijuana. Cannabis recognized, metaphorically speaking, that this was its path to world domination. Produce more of this molecule, and there will be more marijuana plants given more habitat by this creature who likes what this molecule seems to do. And by trying to figure out just how that molecule works, scientists stumbled on an amazing discovery about the workings of our brains. This plant has opened up this very fruitful path of inquiry into understanding how memory works, how consciousness works, how emotion works. We have unlocked this whole mechanism, which we didn't know existed, and we would not know existed if not for this plant. One out of every three flowers bought and sold in the world passes through here. This is the flower auction in the Dutch town of Alsmeer. You're not allowed on the auction floor because there are a million carts zipping around at alarmingly high speeds. And it is like a sea of flowers. It's almost like watching paint being mixed on a palette. You know, you watch this line of yellow sunflowers snaking their way through this ocean of red tulips. It's just dazzling in that way. The floor of the flower auction covers an area bigger than 200 football fields, making it one of the largest buildings on the planet. Some 19 million flowers from all over the world change hands here every day. It's an extraordinarily complex system 
with a very simple purpose, to move flowers from the field to the home as quickly as possible. In flower business, three things are very important, and that's being fast, being fast, and being fast, because a flower that's fresh today uh, will lose 15% of its value tomorrow. The minute you cut it, it starts to die. Uh, there is this race on to get it to market. Once the deal is struck, the perishable flowers are rushed to the Amsterdam airport, and from there, to flower shops all over the world. This incessant, unrelenting movement of flowers and money doesn't let up for a second. All for a product that has absolutely no practical value. Flowers are exquisitely useless. They're this great froth or extravagance in our lives. But that there is a multi-billion dollar trade in these wonderfully useless, beautiful things is kind of great.